Please subscribe this channel. Dad bought a new Cadillac Eldorado convertible in 1976. GM touted it as the last of the big drop tops, a majestic parting shot seemingly designed to transport prom queens, grand marshals, and boss hog types into an increasingly dystopian, gas-rationed future. Dressed in triple red with every option, including fuel injection, automatic high beams, power everything, and a hard tonneau parade boot, that 18.7-foot Luxobarge weighed 5,231 pounds and was motivated via an 8.2-liter V8 under a hood so long you could land an Airbus A380 on it. No one can say that Cadillac let a convertible go gently into that good night. What no one could have imagined back in 1976 was that big convertibles would exist at all 40 years later, much less as 500 plus HP chariots for the same well-to-do neighborhoods that Cadillac once owned. In a world of $2.50 gas and ever-growing stock portfolios, the parade car has returned. Using a big, thirsty, open-air sled to declare I'm rich and deserve this is again possible without having to resort to the classic car market. After a four-decade hiatus, Mercedes is back to building full-size convertibles. Save your letters, we're not counting the E-Class-based 1993-95 Cabriolet because it did not achieve true pulchritude. In no dimension except maybe build quality, does it measure up to this S-Class derived four-seater. Available in three flavors, Merck's convertible is a leather-packed bullet aimed squarely at the Bentley Continental GT convertible. Constant updates have kept the now 12-year-old Continental as relevant as any car costing more than $200 large can credibly be. Admittedly, when conducting a comparison of cars this ludicrously expensive, logic is trumped by baser stuff. Cadillac certainly wasn't thinking logically when it built its 8.2-liter V8. Just as with old stars that grow so large they collapse upon themselves, Cadillac's 500-cubic-inch supergiant, in its final year, made just 190 horsepower, 215 with fuel injection, and 360 pound-feet of torque numbers that Mercedes can now match with a 2.1-liter turbo diesel. But with two turbochargers and more than 500 horsepower each, these modern V8s certainly recall that Cadillac success. Bentley and Mercedes do offer larger 12-cylinder engines, but we chose the V8 versions because upping the cylinder count adds weight, complexity, and cost without, in our opinion, improving the driving experience. Okay, so sometimes logic does trump emotion, even in the illogical world of the big convertible. On the Mercedes side, we selected the 577 horsepower AMG S63 that starts at $178,325, here to do battle with the 520 horsepower Continental GTV 8S convertible that opens at $234,525. AMG's 5.5-liter blown V8 is the perfect foil to Bentley's 4.0-liter blown V8. Because it's not exactly Bentley's engine, it's the same unit found in a number of Audis, this is sort of a proxy war between two German rivals. Cloth top, two-door personal luxury machines might perplex those of us without vacation homes and yachts, but as with the Eldorado of the 70s, there's a seductive magic to a comfortable, tech-filled premium convertible with a V8 heart.